Every collection has a driving purpose that represents the intent of the collection developers. The design of a policy set for a collection is governed by the driving purpose. Examples of a purpose for a collection include build a collection for a project. All members of a project contribute data sets to a common collection to facilitate sharing, analysis, and generation of final project products. The project may need access to shared analysis routines, may need to track product creation stages, and may need to modify the stored data as the work proceeds. Or collaborate with other institutions or persons who are not members of the original project. Data sharing across institutions may require negotiation of institutional review board policies, creation of rules for data distribution, creation of access controls, specification of descriptive metadata, and specification of data formats. Or publish the collection in a digital library. The naming, description, and arrangement will need to comply with discipline standards. Or processing pipeline for analysis. Standard tools for parsing and manipulating the files have to be defined and provided. Or persistent archive for preservation. A sufficient context has to be provided to enable future researchers to understand and use the data. This is formally captured as a designated knowledge community. Or a distribution network for content delivery. A standard example is the management of data delivery from caches established near the users. The driving purpose will evolve as the collection matures. Examples include the inclusion of additional data types, refinement of required descriptive information, updates to access controls, and revision of retention periods. For a project collection, the project members usually have complete tacit knowledge of the properties of the collection. They understand the naming convention, the preferred arrangement, how to parse the data formats, and how the data sets are described. They know where the data sets come from and typically contribute data sets back to the collection. When the collection is shared, the tacit knowledge must be made explicit so that the new collaborators can understand the collection properties, naming, arrangement, description. The explicit knowledge is captured in the form of provenance, descriptive, and administrative metadata attributes that are stored in a metadata catalog. The properties associated with the collection may conform to a standard set appropriate for a desired purpose. For preservation, the standard property set includes integrity, authenticity, chain of custody, and arrangement. For the National Archives, authenticity means that a digital record is what it is claimed to be and comes from the designated source. Chain of custody tracks how each file was managed over time, including storage location and access controls. Original arrangement refers to the organization of records in a record series, enabling the tracking of the provenance of each file back to a submission agreement. Each of these properties will require a set of metadata attributes that should be maintained in the collection. Thus, chain of custody requires management of access controls and management of distribution. Authenticity requires management of provenance information. Additional properties may be required such as a retention period and a disposition policy and use of a standard data format. The National Archives addresses this latter requirement by allowing only text and PDF files to be archived. Each desired collection property represents an assertion that is being made about the collection. The collection property is represented by metadata attributes that are saved for each file. An equivalent assertion is that each file will have appropriately updated metadata attributes. The user of the collection will expect that the attributes were consistently created across all files, that the correct version of the attribute has been created, that there are no missing values, and that the properties will have been created for files deposited by all collection collaborators, thus representing a consensus. Note that this viewpoint is equivalent to establishing a context for the collection that is maintained by the collection creators. A user of the collection wants to know what the properties are in order to decide whether the collection will be relevant for their research. Metadata attributes provide a way to map between the assertions of the collection creators and the expectations of the collection users. Since the required properties for a collection may evolve over time as the user community broadens, a flexible implementation is needed. The collection environment should be able to support new properties, 
New metadata attributes may be associated with each file, requiring reprocessing of the collection contents. Or new policies. The control of the collection may need to change from property generation on input to property generation after staging to a verification area to periodic staging of data that have been approved for inclusion. Or new procedures. Each new property may require the creation of a new procedure that extracts or generates the required metadata. Another example is that the underlying mechanisms might evolve. For example, the checksum algorithm may change from MD5 to SHA-256. In both cases, the procedure generates a checksum, but the length of the checksum may need to become longer to minimize risk. Or persistent state information. Usually the state information that is managed by a system is fixed. The code that generates the state information is hard coded. Thus changing the state information requires changing the software code, which requires installation of a new set of software. The ability to manage new state information requires the ability to plug in new software systems without affecting the core infrastructure. Thus, both state information and code changes need to be updated in concert. The IROD's data grid provides the required extensibility mechanisms. These include schema indirection to support addition of new metadata attributes, plugins to support new drivers for interacting with new technologies, microservices to encapsulate new code, and policies for controlling operations. The goal is to support extensibility, enabling changes to the middleware without having to stop a production system. Please take seven minutes to do exercise number four. Write a paragraph on a data management application that is important to you. Describe the purpose for the collection and the properties that the collection should have. Over the course of the semester, your assessment may evolve. You may change the purpose, add support for additional collections, change the required descriptive metadata, change access controls, etc. We will compare this initial assessment with the final assessment. Please load your paragraph into the Lifetime Library in the subcollection class INLS 624 by the end of today's class. The Lifetime Library is in production use at the School of Information and Library Science at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. The library supports personal digital collections for students and faculty. The purpose for attending a university should include the formation of a personal digital reference collection that will support a future professional career. The reference collection can be organized as a digital library, including personal papers, reports, homework assignments, and links to references. The SILS Lifetime Library is kept in perpetuity. One purpose is to enable students to return for postgraduate training and build upon their original courses. A reference collection needs to continually evolve to incorporate new concepts. The personal collection may contain material downloaded from social media or material migrated from existing storage systems. The reference collection can serve as a repository that integrates data from multiple sources while providing a uniform namespace and a logical arrangement for the material. The student personal digital libraries were usually created to support personal collections of items such as photographs, books, MP3s, and videos. The collections invariably evolved to support materials such as class reports, project reports, and references. A student can organize the material into multiple subcollections with different metadata attributes for each subcollection. Thus, a student can assemble collections of multiple types of material and treat each as a separate collection. Many students concentrated on a formal reference collection, organizing material by school year, semester, and class. In the most extensive case, the reference collection collated material across multiple institutions and multiple degrees. The Lifetime Library implements policies to control both the digital library environment and to control collection properties. The policies for the digital library environment include standard policies for default storage location for files, storage location for replicas, <clears throat> number of parallel I.O. streams for large data transfer. The policies that control the collection include quota with a storage limit of 250 gigabytes and additional 250 gigabytes is allowed for replicas. Integrity, 
Each file is replicated to a remote storage location and checksums are maintained for each file. Strict access controls are enforced that limit the ability of other persons to see anyone else's file names. This is in addition to access controls that prevent access to and reading of other person's files. And sharing management. A person can still choose to provide access to other persons through specification of explicit access controls. Each student manages their own collection. Each student has to choose how the files will be named, how the files will be arranged in collections, what type of provenance information is needed. Each student is asked to provide sufficient information so that 20 years in the future, they will be able to understand why they chose to save the data. What types of descriptive information is needed? Students get to choose either or both metadata attributes, name value unit, and tags, just the name. They get to choose what formats to allow, what access controls to set, and whether they will share their collections. In effect, each student is the domain expert for their own collection. Students can implement policies to automate the management of their collections. Typical policies include generation of reports of collection size, extraction of metadata. The creation of metadata for 10,000 files is an onerous task if done by hand. Creation of derived products. A typical example is the generation of thumbnails of images to support browsing. And validation of assessment criteria. Examples include verification of the presence of required descriptive metadata, verification of the types of data formats, and verification of access controls. Each homework assignment is due at noon on Monday of the following week. I will harvest homework from your lifetime library collection called Class INLS 624. You will need to provide read access on the collection to R.W. Moore. You should also set inheritance on the collection so deposited files will be automatically accessible. Please include your lifetime library account name on each file you put into class INLS 624 and label each file with the homework number. Each homework assignment should be at least a page in length. You can incorporate text from the eight exercises for the eight modules learned each week. Identify 10 essential properties for a digital library that should be conserved. They may be related to integrity, arrangement, access, description, provenance, user identity, authentication, authorization, retention, disposition, distribution, audit trails, formats, permission, etc. A resource is the Policy Template Workbook, Chapters 1 and 7.